Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie and in this video I'm going to explain relational database design functional dependencies and in the previous video I've already explained what functional dependencies are and their types. If you haven't watched it's linked down below and today we are going to see how to calculate closures for attributes as well as for functional dependencies. And these are very important calculations available within a relational database design that lead us to some very interesting conclusions. So let's get started. First of all, we are going to see what is a closure of a set of attributes. So I will be teaching you calculation of closure of a set of attributes, but it is mainly done in order to identify a primary key or a candidate key for a given relation. So we are going to see through calculations how to actually do this thing. Now I'm going to closure for this particular example, and it looks like this. You have a relation that is R and it has attributes A, B, C, G, H, and I. It also contains functional dependencies. A determines B. So this is read as A determines B. Whenever you have an arrow, you always read it as A determines B or B determines C. So whatever is on the left determines whatever is on the right. So the next functional dependency is A determines C. C, G determines H. C, G determines I, B determines H. And the question is, is A, G a candidate key? Now remember that R is the name of a table and A, B, C, G, H, I, they are all columns present in this table. So they are not given any specific names, but this is what you have to work on when most of the times questions about closures are asked. And these are the functional dependencies created on this particular relation. And now you are asked if AG is a candidate key or not. So this is what you have to tell by calculation. And first I'm going to show you how to tell this um, using any attribute. I'm not going to straight away calculate for AG. I'll calculate first for some other attribute so that you understand how actually closure is calculated. So I'm going to calculate the closure first of all for A. So this is how we do it. First of all, you're going to write down A plus. Okay, so A plus means I'm calculating the closure of A. And then you can write down this is equal to and what you need to do at this point is look at all the dependencies that have A on the left side. And remember that whenever you calculate closure, you always begin by adding the element or elements whose closure you're finding. So that means in this set, I'm going to add A. Now for the second element, look at the first um, functional dependency given right here. So this is the functional dependency A determines B and because this is given to you and if you look at your set, your set contains only A and the dependency given to you is A determines B. So that means whatever is on the left side of this dependency, left side being A, is present in this set right here. So when this thing happens, you can select B to be part of this set. So this is B is a kind of a new uh, addition to this set. Now let's go ahead and check the next dependency. The next dependency on the left has A. Can you say that A is the subset of this new set that I'm computing? Yes, we can. And that's why whatever is on the right side we will again add to this set. 
Now let's see the next part. Next part is C G determines H. This is my next dependency. Now here you can check is C present in this new set? Yes, it's present. But is G present in this new set? No, it's not. So that's why we cannot add H to this set right now. Next, we're going to check C, G determines I. So once again, C is present in the set, but G is not present. And that's why we cannot add I. And for the last dependency, B determines H. So in this case, B is present in the set. And that's why we can add H. So H is added. Now once you're done, you can just take a quick look back again to the first uh, dependency and check it. Have you added B inside? Yes, you have. Have you added C? Yes, you have. Have you added H? Yes, it's already there. Check if you've added I. Um, you haven't added I. Is it possible now to add I with all these attributes present? No, it's still not possible because I do not have G present in this set right here. So G is not there. That's why I cannot add it. And then there is B determines H and I've already added H. So that's it. This is the closure of A. And the thing is that if I were to get the elements G and I, so what is missing here is G and I, both are missing. If I were to get both these elements or both these columns, then I could say that A is a primary key. So then I can write down that A is a primary key. But right now, you see that I did not get all the elements. And that's why A is not a primary key in this case. So when can you say that something is a primary key or a candidate key? When after taking the closure, you get all the elements present. So that's what we are going to check now for the value given here that is AG. Now let's compute the closure of AG and to do so I'm going to write down over here AG plus. So this is how you calculate closure. You always mention the plus sign to show that it is a closure. So you can write down AG plus is equal to and obviously you're going to add A as well as G to this set. And now let's begin with our first dependency. A determines B. So can you say now that A is present in your set? Yes, it is. So you're going to add B to your set as well. Next, we are checking A determines C. Can you say that C, uh, A is present in your set? It's present. And that's why you can go ahead and add C also. Next, we have CG determines H. Are C and G both present in this set? Yes, they are. So that's why we can add H also to this set. Next is CG determines I. So is our are C and G present? We already verified they are. And that's why we can add I to this set. Now the next thing is uh, are B and H uh, sorry uh, is B present in this set? It's present. So we can add H to this set but H is already present so we are not going to add it again. So if you notice now the values that I've got here are A, B, C, G, H and I and my relation right here also contains the same columns. So I got all the columns when I tried to find the closure for AG plus. And so to conclude, you can say that AG is a candidate key. 
Okay, so this is how you can calculate the candidate key. So if somebody is asking you a question saying, is this uh, is this set a candidate key? Then you can just compute its closure using the functional dependencies. And if it forms a closure containing all the attributes, then it is a candidate key. That's what you can conclude using this. Now let's go ahead and see one more example. So I have a relation called R, A, B, C, D, E. And I've got functional dependencies A determines B, C, C, D determines E, B determines D, E determines A. And this is a question that's going to be quite long because it's saying compute candidate keys of R, which means I need to compute all possible candidate keys of R. Now, how long is this process going to go on? First, you're going to compute A plus, B plus, C plus, D plus, and E plus. And if neither of those is giving you all the attributes of R, then that means now you need to take uh, pairs of elements. So you have to calculate AB plus, AC plus, AD plus, AE plus, and then BC plus and BD plus, and so on. So if one of these elements, uh, one of these sets gives you all the attributes present here, then you can say that you have successfully calculated the candidate key of R. So only then can you stop. And so we are going to first of all start with calculating uh, A plus. So I'm going to calculate a plus. So if I have A, then using this first dependency, I can add, because of A, there is always A present, but I can also add B and C. And now I can check the next one, which is CD determines E. Can I add C and D? Uh, can I add E over here? I cannot because I don't have D. The next dependency is B determines D. And B is present in my set, so I can add D to this set, which is the right side value. Next, I need to check E determines A. Do I have E present in my set? I do not, and that's why I cannot add A, but I don't need to add A. A is already present. Now let's go back from the beginning. A is present in my set. So I've already added B and C, so I don't need to add it again. Next, I'm checking this functional dependency, C, D determines E. Are C and D both present in my set? Yes, they are. So as a result of this, earlier I was not able to add E, but now I can add E. So I've added E. Now you can check B determines D. B is present and D is already added, so I don't have to do anything about that. Then, the, then I have E determines A, E is present, and A is already added. I don't need to do anything, and I close the set, and you can see that I have all the attributes A, B, C, D, and E, which means A plus, you can call it a candidate key or you can call it a primary key. In this case, I'm just going to call it a candidate key because that is what the question demanded. So this is a candidate key. Now the good news is when you get a candidate key with a single attribute, that means you'd no longer have to compute AB plus, AC plus, AD plus, and so on, or even uh, three attributes at a time. Uh, you know that the candidate key is can be formed by one attribute alone. So now what you need to do is you cannot stop here. You have to calculate B plus, C plus, uh, and rest of the attributes, closures of rest of the attributes alone. So that's what we are going to do now. So let's say that now I want to calculate B plus. So what do I get? First of all, I can put B directly into this set. Now, let me check the first dependency. 
I cannot add that. Second dependency, C and D are not present. Third dependency, B is present in my set, which means I can add D. And next is E determines A, but E is not present, so I can't add it. And just to be sure, we have to take another round. And at that time, we check again, is A present? It's not. C, D are not present. B is present, but I already added D. Then I have E. E is not present. So that's it for B. I did not get all the attributes. So this is not a candidate key. Next, I'm going to check for C+. So obviously, I can add C, but can I add B, C from here? I cannot using this dependency because A is not present. From here, C is present, but D is not present, so I cannot add D either. Then I have B, but B is not present. E is not present, so C contains only this much. So C is not a candidate key either. The next thing I'm going to compute is D plus. And for that, I can obviously add D. But can I add anything else? I cannot add this or this or this, or for that matter, this. So that's all. So this is not a candidate key either. And my last attribute is E, so I can add E, but can I add any of these? Yes, if you go ahead, if you proceed, you can't add this right now. You can't add this right now or this, but you can add this. So I can add A. And once I've added A and I start again from the beginning, you can see that I can add B and C also because A is now present in my set. So I am adding B and C. So this is done. Now, are C and D present in my set? No, D is not present. So for the moment, at the moment, I cannot add this. But let us see about B determines D. Can I add D? Yes, I can. So I'm going to add D. And then the last thing left is this, which I've already added. Now, you can check over here that C and D are present, and so E can be added, but E is actually already present, so nothing more left to do. And you can see that I actually got everything. I got A, B, C, D, and E, all the elements. So E is also a candidate and so as a conclusion for this entire calculation that we performed right here you can write down you can write down over here that a and E are both candidate keys of R. So this is your final conclusion uh, by calculating all this. And you don't need to calculate further because it is fixed that the candidate key would be of size 1, uh, consisting of only one attribute. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.